But I'll be presenting on um, our experiment called MORTI, the Molten Salt Research Temperature Control and Radiation. Multi-team wide effort at INL and uh, my co-PIs are Gregory Kaur, Bill Phillips and Chu Ling Tang as well. So we're trying to establish domestic neutron and radiation capability for fissile bearing salts at INL. One of the key benefits of working at INL is that you have a lot of PIE, so post-irradiation examination facilities, and we want to take full advantage of that as part of this experiment. Three main outcomes we hope to get is to get some initial data on radioactive source terms, so what stays in the salt, what goes in the off-gas, what pl plates out, on the evolution of thermophysical properties of salt, uh, and on the corrosion of uh, properties of, of walls facing the, the, the salt, basically. So we're hoping to showcase what we have planned right now and uh, receive some feedback. We're going to be using the NRAD reactor at INL, so it's a radiography reactor actually, and it's a trigger type uh, reactor, relatively low power, uh, but it's still going to be very useful for initial data points when it comes to fissile bearing molten salts that haven't been radiated before. One key advantage of NRAD is it's right in the basement of, a hot, of the main hot cell at INL HFEF, and will be the only experiment running in the core, so we have full control of the reactor power, we're mimicking the NRAD fuel cluster in our design to make it as easy to handle and manipulate the fuel and then dispose of it afterwards and decommission it. It will be placed in the F1 position in the bottom left corner in the figure. We've started our project in fiscal year 21, and that was mainly relating to design and testing activities. Wrapping up our design review right now, and we're hoping to get our experiment safety approval early uh, next year. We've started fabricating mo most of the parts and ordering the ones we can fabricate in-house. And we're hoping to finish assembly uh, March of 2022. We started synthesizing some depleted uranium salt. We'll be moving to uh, enriched salt in the beginning of fiscal year, uh, beginning of calendar year as well. We plan on running a prototype test that will also function as a sister experiment so to give us a uh, corrosion baselining. Uh, so we'll have a non irradiated out of pile experiment to baseline against our irradiated impal experiment. Then we'll move on to some flux tests. So basically, we'll just put uh, non-uranium bearing salts inside of the experiment, so uh, inert uh, chloride salts in this case, uh, just to make sure our equipments work well and facilities uh, in place and also to recharacterize our, our, our flux. And then commence the irradiation, hopefully in the summer of this fiscal year, uh, before going to, to rapid turn on PIE work. So for some of the isotopes that will decay with a very short half-life, we're trying to get some data early on uh, within the fourth end of fiscal year, and then do our extensive PIE activities uh, next fiscal year in 2023. We decided to go for uh, uranium fluoride uh, type salts. Uh, fluoride salts haven't been irradiated in the past, and we thought there could be a lot of benefits from doing a first test. Um, we selected HEU to maximize the uh, amount of burn up or um, uh, power density inside of fuel. We're selecting a target power density of 20 watts per cc, uh, which isn't what a uh, full-fledged large gigawatt scale reactor would see in terms of power density, but it's an initial data point and it will be useful for low power uh, concepts, whether it's a, say, a micro reactor type application or a demonstration like MCRE that's being planned for the Zipper uh, Lotus test facility at INL. For the salt facing material, we selected Incanal 625. We originally started with stainless steel, uh, but quickly realized that we had some um, temperature greeting problems that we had to address and we want to play it safe and go for Econel 625 since it's still just for chloride salts and can withstand higher temperatures. We have to ensure our salt can be kept above freezing so to avoid as much as possible salt radiolysis. This was a key feedback we received from MIT actually and credit goes to Joss Forbrook for sharing this kind of information. And lastly, we want to make sure that we can really we have at least five cc's of salt to radiate that's uh, needed for PAE activities. We need uh, for some of the measurements uh, a specific amount of um, material. And obviously also facility safety requirements, on the reactivity standpoint, temperature standpoints, weight limits, and also maintaining integrity of the experiment as a whole and following quality assurance standards. Our current final design, you can see here, it looks like a four pin cluster with three of the pins being dummies, essentially just filled with aluminum, and one of them being the actual experiment. It's supported on a graphite uh, reflector at the bottom. Um, then uh, the uh, picture on the far right shows a cutout of the capsule itself. So it's a double encapsulated system um, with a gas gap separation that uh, we, we fine tune the gas gap mixture to control the temperature inside of the experiment, essentially. Uh, the salt is in purple, oh sorry, purple, and uh, yellowish green, I guess. It's surrounding a immersion type heater. So the heater is on the inside of the salt. It will control the temperature before and after and during radiation as well, and also after. 
of course, and there are some instrumentation submerged inside of the salt as well. We have multiple instrumentation positions, currently primarily using them for thermocouples, just to monitor the temperature inside of the salt in the plenum region, uh, to just to be able to monitor what's going on. In the future, we could potentially put some in, in pile uh, monitoring equipment potentially. We also have an optical fiber pressure sensor. It won't be in contact with the salt directly, but with the plenum, uh, um, just to measure the, the pressure there and hopefully get some data on fission gas production. Um, in the future, also, that could be potentially repurposed for off gas line um, to do some measurements, such as the experiments that were done in MIT in the past. Uh, but that wasn't part of the budget right now, so we, we limited the pressure sensor at this point. And then obviously we have a heater as well, uh, and heater inputs to control the temperature, as I mentioned before. PIE activities, post radiation examination activities are primary objective and goal of this experiment. We have quite a few things on the agenda and planned out. Um, we're planning on doing most of the disassembly and removal of the salt at HFEF, the hot fuel cell examination facility. Also conducting some precision gamma scanning, neutron radiography, uh, going to the analytical lab, we'll be doing some gas analysis and some salt isotopic analysis as well. Uh, we have some thermophysical property measurements planned, primarily DSCTGAMS and laser flash techniques. And when the uh, molten salt thermophysical property examination capability, or MISTIC, that Tony Carson is leading will become available, we're hoping to leverage uh, those facilities as well for additional thermophility measurements as they become available. So we had to do quite a bit of preparatory uh, activities this fiscal year to prepare for the PIE work that will be undertaken this and next fiscal year. And I'll briefly touch on those. Uh, we had to make sure we interface well with the gasser system, so the sampling system that allows us to extract the plenum gas and the salt. Uh, we had to update the wall and dimensions of the experiment to make sure that uh, it fits with the, the instrumentation needed for the gasser system. We also did some preliminary mock-up tests to show that we can remove the salt during PIE in the hot facility, hot cell. So we use the same equipment that we would, we would have access to in HFEF uh, to test how we can remove the salt after it's frozen uh, back at the experiment. Uh, we were able to get really good recovery rates. So we, we believe 90% plus of the mass of salt could be recovered from the experiment after irradiation, which was a very good sign. The second round of PIE preparation we did was on the thermal uh, property cell. So that's a hot cell facility that we have at IMCL at INL. Uh, there we'll be conducting uh, the laser flash evaluation analysis and the DSC TGMS analysis. For the LFA in particular, we had to develop a new crucible uh, to be able to handle the salt and conduct the measurement. Uh, we had to iterate on, on multiple design and figure out what, what combination of, 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 uh, of metrics worked best. And we tested the measurements with water, sodium nitrate, and then finally sodium chloride. And uh, we're hoping to do some more measurements this fiscal year as we prepare for irradiated samples. So the main activity was design and final design evaluation. So we conducted some neutronics of, uh, analysis. Uh, here you can see an MCMP replica of the experiment and how, how it looks like in, in that model. We're able to uh, obtain exactly 20 watts per cc in fission heat generation, uh, meeting our experiment objectives. We tabulated a bunch of uh, data on different heating rates at different positions in the experiment. You can see here that total salt produces about 250 watts of heat. And these these data points will be handed to the thermal analysis. We're handed to the thermal analysis, I should say, um, the, shortly after. And finally, we we also investigated the impact on reactivity feedback, and we're much much lower than the NRAD limit. That was one of the reasons why we picked the F1 limit, as opposed to some of the central position in NRAD, which could be an option in the future. But for now, as a first experiment, uh, we thought best to play it safe and, and stick with F1 where we have very limited impact on reactivity. So my colleague Stacy uh, Wilson uh, conducted some abacus uh, simulate analysis. So these were our initial calculation, assuming there was no uh, convection in the salt. So that was a conservative assumption, just to get some uh, safety bounding cases, essentially some conservative estimates for the uh, experiment safety evaluation. We put in the NRAD, obviously the NRAD uh, flow condition and conditions of the reactor there. And we conducted two sets of, of analyses, one before irradiation, so where only the heater is operating, and one during irradiation when both heater and fission are producing power. We were able to show that we were able to respect the wall temperature limit of 100 degrees Celsius, so our wall temperature is below 55 degrees Celsius, uh, showing that we should be okay from an experiment safety standpoint, um, both during and, uh, and before irradiation. 
Uh, our analysis indicated that we might not be able to melt all the salt, but that was found to be too conservative. Our computational fluid dynamics simulation showed that uh, we were able to actually reach us the sweet spot of having not too high of a salt and uh, not too cold either. Um, so we used SARS-CCM plus for this analysis. Um, we realized later on that uh, the convective effects were actually pretty substantial, even in a, in a small annulus of 0.4 centimeters of salt. Um, so that's why CFD was needed for the analysis. We needed to make sure we, we stayed within the uh, dashed line in the plots on the left uh, for both the heater only and the fission heat is on. Uh, and you can see that you could do so. So for the heater only case, we had to crank up the heater power all the way up to 400 watts. That's what we're expecting to operate in uh, to make sure that we stay within the limit. So we have all the salt mol molten uh, and respect the in canal uh, li and heater limit actually as well. The heater itself is uh, temperature limited as well. It can operate below above uh, 1,200 degrees Celsius. And then when the reactor was on and fission heat was being generated, we only needed about 100 watts of heater power since the majority of the remainder of power will be generated from the fission reactor in itself. Uh, and you can see there where we, we lie within those conditions, basically, and we can still stay within these uh, dashed, dashed lines for our operation. The plots on the right are showing the temperature distribution within the salt from the CFT simulation and also in the plenum. Um, as well as the velocities that we're going to be observing in the salt. Just to clarify, this was also zoomed in on the salt itself, so we didn't model the whole experiment. Uh, this was mainly for programmatic reasons. We wanted to look at what the temperature control, the thermocouples will see to fine tune our control system controller for the purposes of this experiment. So we are planning a radiation of our experiment called MORTY inside the NRAD reactor at INL. Uh, we're planned, the innovation is planned for summer of 2022. We have a comprehensive PIE planned as part of the project, it includes gamma scanning, mass spectrometry, uh, corrosion analysis, and th salt thermophysical property measurements. The last two will be conducted for out of pile and in pile salt sample to baseline both cases. We will be using an immersion heater to control the temperature before, during, and after irradiation to try to maintain it to avoid radiolysis uh, of frozen salt, essentially, is the main purpose there, uh, and also control the temperature during irradiation as much as we can. Uh, the power density of 20 watts per C was targeted and, and was shown to be able to reach as part of our experiment objective. We have a synth salt analyst and uh, temperatures can be maintained above melting and below material limits. Thermal requirements were also met. We conducted some initial PIE activities to ensure that we could adequately interface with uh, the tools uh, that are available to us after irradiation. We are currently wrapping up our final design review stage right now with fabrication already underway. I like to acknowledge the INL LDRD office of the Laboratory Director Research and Development Office that has awarded us the funding for this project. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. And here's my email in case I can't answer questions today or didn't have a chance to. And you could feel free to reach out, please, with anything. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I definitely think you guys have a really interesting irradiation planned out. Um, you're going to get a lot of science out of it for sure. There were several questions in the chat but it looks like bill has chimed in and answered quite a few of them one of the last questions i just saw pop up that hasn't been answered how is the redox controlled right now we, we do not have in situ redox control in the experiment um so um, that's also part of the the, the, the purpose is also to, to get a baseline of what happens in the reactor and how, how much that affects corrosion um, but in the future we can replace one of those instrumentation positions and put, say, a uranium rod or something of that nature, some some redox controlling um, setup to, to to provide that input. And actually, we, I was just discussing that with one of the one of my colleagues of the MSR campaign. How long are you planning to irradiate? We're targeting thirty days of irradiation. The NRAD facility limits are more; it's more from the staffing requirements, uh, primarily rather than a facility limit or something of that nature. Um, yeah, that's our current plan. Have you uh, reached out to Joel McDuffie at all? Uh, you know, he was working on the salt loop for VTR. And I, I think that some of the instrumentation that was developed, because it's also a very small system, um, you could potentially leverage some of his in-pile instrumentation, such as uh, I, I noticed that you had the corrosion sensor, fiber-based, or excuse me, fiber-based pressure sensor, but I know that there's a fiber-based corrosion sensor that was underdeveloped as well. So maybe you could do online monitoring of the corrosion as well. Yeah, it's a very good tip. And uh, I, I used to work with quite a bit with Joel in the previous couple of years, but I, I, I seem to have lost touch a bit. I should re-engage. That's a good advice. <laughs>
we've been engaging with Patrick Aldroni's group at INL, which have been developing, they're developing the pressure sensors. Right. Um, they're, they're in touch with him, uh, but I should try to reach out directly. Thank you. Thank you so much for your talk today. Like I said, it was very interesting. It's going to be exciting to see the results.